So can you talk a little bit about how you feel about doing this? Um, I guess. Or how do you feel right now? In general? Comfortable, actually. Good. I mean, Good. if it wasn't you guys, I wouldn't do it. Why? Because I like you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a super compliment. <laughs> It's true. Like it. Context is really important, I think. If there's a, that kind of reveal, there has to be something substantial. Can you talk about what your style says about you? For me, dressing is just lifting myself up and feeling awesome, you know, feeling great when I go out the door. So my interactions are, are really enhanced. Because I think it's important to have a great fucking day. What kind of a fucked up mood I started with, I, I need to turn that around because it's not about me. When I walk in, out in the world, it becomes about us. Can you talk about what you think people might assume about you, whether it's correct or incorrect, like at first glance? I make very distinct choices, mm -hmm. and they're not choices that, that are safe choices. And also, also people of my age, because I'm, I'm going to be 55 next, next month, you know, we've got people that are losing their memory of that kind of choice. We live in a world where, where choices are made for us and it's really easy for people to get lazy. Big mega stores, same clothes, same appliances, same everything. It's very easy to go in and just get something quick, you know, something shitty. I don't like being told that I can't do something because I'm a fucking certain age or because I don't, I don't meet a certain demographic. I have worked hard to get to this place. Getting sober, working through my late relationships with my family, with my friends, getting rid of old behavior, introducing new behaviors, the shit that you do to become a, a whole person. For any outside entity, somebody outside of me to dictate how I should do anything, they can suck it. Being in bands, being a woman in a band, not taken too seriously. You know, that's great. You guys sound really good. You should have another guitar player. And there's some dude telling me this. It's like, you know what? Fuck off. Just because I'm a chick does not mean that you're gonna tell me what to do. And there are a number of men that do that to women, you know, in, in bands. And it's not cool. There's so many distractions in this world that keep us out of just being here. Paying bills, making money, you know, obsessing on like the thing we should have said to a friend when that person offended us. Making makes you present. Makes you, it keeps you in, in the simplest, most productive, it's where the light is. Was there a time where you were using more destructive means of handling those? Yeah, you shot heroin for years because I wasn't willing to be here. I have been sober March 11th, 1996. That's my sober date. I will have 20 years if I am still living on March 11th. <laughs> when I first had alcohol, I drank alcoholically. I drank alcoholically the first time I drank. When I was 13, threw up all over myself. I blacked out. Blackout, 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 blackout. I'm a firm believer that I'm an addict that I am hardwired for it, that I have some sort of a chemical makeup that, that, that fucks me up when I, when I use drugs and alcohol. But a big part of addiction is like, is just trying to blame it on somebody else. You know, it's like, oh, I have pain, somebody else's, somebody else's problem. It's like, no, it's my, I, I own this. I own who I am, I own my actions, I own everything. What was a low moment? during that time? I was shooting so many drugs that my, my heart was going and my circulation was going and everything was going, I couldn't move. And it was either stop or die. I stopped. Nobody made that choice for me, I made it myself. There were plenty of people that, that wanted me to stop, but the decision came down to me. I was married at the time to another drug addict and I just was looking up into a ceiling and it just happened. Because I couldn't move, I couldn't breathe. I just didn't want to deal with anything. I didn't want to deal with my parents, maybe the relationship I needed to work on with them. I had like years of pent up anger about, and I don't even know what it's, it is now. My mom was really difficult. My mom was also a, a functioning alcoholic. A big part of my sobriety has just been understanding my mom and really looking, looking the world through her eyes and really getting a solid friendship with her. 
having a better understanding of how she was brought up, having a better understanding of like her what her loves, her fears, everything, really having true compassion for her. I got clean on their, you know, at their house in, in the room that I grew up in. And it actually made my, 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 my relationship a lot stronger with them because it was like no bullshit. And I also made a commitment to just change everything. I changed my whole day. I used to get up in the morning, I used to cop dope. So I got in the, up in the morning and I wrote instead. Midday, I would cop dope. So midday, I would go out and exercise. In the evening, I would go cop dope. So I would practice with my band. It's like you want to make a big change, then you have to make, you, you have to take big actions to do that thing. And that is a life and death situation from my point of view. My sobriety has driven the rest of my life. I can trust myself to keep a promise and to stay in the mode of action to keep on the course. Once you decide that willpower comes, it doesn't, it's, it's not the other way around. I think that that's, that's what, where people get confused. There's no, there's no power with that decision. So when do you feel the most vulnerable? Not being around people, biggest one. Being like isolating yourself? Yes. Or? Yesterday I, got, I, was, I was just tired and I decided not to pick up any phone calls and I was like watching movies and all of a sudden I started feeling that, that way. You know, it's like, oh, I haven't talked to enough people. And then I went, walked my dog, ran into a couple people, boom, gone. If I isolate, like, it feels toxic to me. It feels like something is hurting me on the inside, you know? Like all that, all that energy that I should be using is just sort of like churning inside of me and just like, like glass, you know? And, I, and as soon as I get out in the world, I start playing music or making, you know, making yeah. art. When do you feel the most beautiful? When I can see myself in what I make. When I can see the truth that I've, 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 I've made something that is the essence of who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. What makes it even better is if somebody sees that. It's like that connection, mm -hmm. that makes me feel great. That, that makes me feel high. That energy of connection is everything. Mm -hmm. That's life affirming. I always look for that person, that man, woman, child, who is stunning. I saw this girl on the street and she had just like, she was doing this monochromatic red and she just looked like, she just had this light and she was walking through the crowd, she had this light and I, and I just stopped her and said, you have made me so happy. I pulled over, like pulled over, like on the road. It's like, who are you? Because it says so much about self-esteem and it says so much about self-worth. And it's like, that's individualism on display. That's power on display. That's personal power on display, you know? It inspires us all. Why in your body is it a good place to be? Because it is what I have. <laughs> and I cannot live anywhere else. I must be here. And I know where I am. And it's a comfortable place for me to be. That was fucking amazing I'm like having I'm having I'm like I'm like I'm like vibrating whoa like when it comes together like the oh my god it was so good the whole thing no no I'm taking pictures of you oh yeah I thought you were going somewhere that was so great thank you so much no problem it was just awesome like so great for people to hear all of that yeah, you're one of those people. I hope you know oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> you're one of those people. You're the person that, the, that you pull over, you're that person. <laughs> you are that person. You are that person. Thank you. Well, you are. I mean, we...